What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out the demo for the sequel to Ratropolis. A spin-off, really. It's not really much of a sequel. It's not a card game, it's actually a RimWorld kind of craft the world style city builder, which I'm here for. A colony survival game. Uh, you are an exiled rat princess and you've got to build up an entire new colony on the fringes of civilization to try to take back what is yours. And so we're gonna dive on into this demo here today and probably play it for about 30 minutes. If after watching this, you wanted to get the demo for yourself, I will have that listed for you down below. You can check it out on Steam. You can check it out on itch.io. It doesn't really matter. You'll also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live along the way. But let's go ahead and let's play some Ratopia. Uh, we've got a new game over here. We've got our leader. We've got our settlement. I don't need the tutorial. Let's go ahead and we will call this Glorious Radistan. There we go. Glorious Radistan can never fall. The People's Democratic Guard will make sure that Radistan and its great and powerful flag flap forever in the breezes. Let's start the game. I wonder how far I've gotten. Finally, the assassins seem to be giving up, but my loyal subjects are all gone too. I guess I'm just going to have to stay here and brace myself. Perhaps this place might soon become a new home. Uh, the game doesn't seem to have its translation completely and totally done. It's not quite like a chat GPT or like a machine translation, but you will find as you go through the tutorial that it definitely feels as though it's been translated uh, from some other language. Like the syntax and the wordage can be a little bit awkward. You'll still be able to figure it out like it's not super bad. But it is there. So just as a little bit of a warning, if you're looking for a translation for this game that's like utterly flawless, not going to be the case this time around. Probably later on in development, though, would be my guess. As of right now, what we're really fiddling with is kind of a prototype. Now, what surprised me about this game is when you first start out, you actually control the rat princess. I had thought that it was just going to give you kind of like a 2D side-scrolling overworld view of everything that was taking place, and that you were going to kind of do the craft the world thing where you give people vague orders they kind of go where they're supposed to go and in going there they get tasks done and do manufacturing and stuff like that uh, not the case you're actually a playable character in this game which gives it a little bit of an rpg feel to it we've got a combat mode we can go into to fight and attack with enemies and it actually has a, a differentiated animation for a combo right there which i didn't expect when i first started fiddling around with the demo either it suffice it to say this one surprised me but then again retropolis was such a good game that I don't know why it surprises me. I should have expected quality coming on in, and quality there is. Let's go ahead and knock down some trees. For every new object that we find on the world map, we are going to get research points. But for now, what we really need to do is we kind of just need to get this place set up for cohabitation. Don't need to chop down any more trees. That's limestone right there. Yeah, they did actively try to give it kind of like that uh, elephant skin finish that limestone tends to have that's so iconic in the old limestone world. And we are gonna have to dig downwards, which is gonna be a little bit of a problem. I need leaves though, before I can dig downwards effectively. We do get like a little vault animation if you can go up two tiles, but we can't go up three tiles and it looks like we've made our base sort of at like the base of a hill over here. I'm gonna mine out this copper before I forget, but we're gonna need to start digging downwards and sort of making like an underground domicile. Rats don't like to live on the surface in this game. And so we need to get down into here, and then we need to make a city gate that's going to allow us to attract other rats to come live in our society. So for now, what I'm going to do is we'll even this out, I think, a little bit later. But I'm just going to make like a little stairwell that goes down and into the ground, I guess. And actually, it looks like we've already got like a pre-cleared cave over here. I wonder if there's going to be scaffoldings and things that I can use. I mean, no matter what, this is kind of what I need right here is just these grasses. So there we go. We've got our grasses. I can drop those on the ground. And now that we've got our grasses, we can actually start to clear things out because the starting ladders require grasses. And so let me just hollow this area out and then we'll get to it. Our little home is coming along. We're going to need a little bit more space to play around with, but I am going to be making use of some editing here to make sure that we don't spend too much time farming things. I do need to put in one more section of ladder right there. 
And then I've got that right there, so we'll go ahead and build it on up. Good. And the first thing we need for our society to actually function is we are going to need a city entrance. And it looks like we need some stone in order to get that done. So I'm just going to take this stone back on up to the surface. And we'll plop it in there. And for gathering rocks, we have been, you know, gifted our first little piece of research right there. Throw that in there, too, with the dirt. We've got lots of ferrying we need to do over here, though. I think the best place we could put the entrance to our town is probably, like, right there. And so I need to, like, hollow all this out so that we can get after it properly. And I think after a little bit of elbow grease and spit polish, we got this thing done. I don't know exactly how many rocks and things it's going to take me to get this gate on in there, but the process is pretty much concluded. So it's going to take three rocks. That's easy enough. So we'll go ahead and throw the three rocks in there, and then it wants three woods. Do I have three woods inside of here? I do. Okay. Then I will take the three woods out of the crate, and we will take it on over here. So far, control scheme for the game feels pretty predictable. Like, it feels like it works how you expect it to work. Oh, good, we've got migrants. Yay. Uh, hey, we've got street poets. We've got freedom seekers. I'll probably just go with Jack and Dune, I guess. Take, like, two of them. It looks like he is foolish. He's a pacifist. It looks like she's militant, so she likes to... See, opposites attract me. I mean, I don't know if these two are together, but I think they deserve to be together. One of them's a pacifist. One of them's a warmonger. You know what I mean? Let's grab our migrants real fast, and hopefully they'll be able to help us out with the overall process of digging this place out. Yeah, as you can see, they're starting to grab stuff and put it inside the central repository. Good. Uh, what other things can we possibly get moving? I'm just gonna mine over here for a minute while they get the entire place cleaned up and then we'll figure out what we wanna do next. Little detail here, but they change the animation depending on how high above you you're mining. So if you mine it like a three height or like a two height, she actually looks at a different focal spot and she swings the pickaxe differently. Just a beautiful little detail. You love to see stuff like that in a game like this. It also looks like every single time they do anything, they get paid. Our money is kind of disappearing. So that's going to be sort of an interesting twist on this overall formula, too. Like, when you play RimWorld, you don't really have to, like, pay your guys. You know what I mean? This time around, it's cost us 50 bucks just to clear off the floor of all the stuff that's over here. Let's see. So we've got build orders. What kind of things do we want to place? We've got a gatherer's camp. Okay, so there's a couple things I think we're going to need. I've taken a look at all the buildings and what the supply chain looks like. And I think the sawmill is probably going to be our first big task. Uh, we need to start being able to process wood into planks so that we can do more advanced construction, I guess. Uh, will she jump over that? Oh, she will. She does like her own natural little hop to get over it. Good. I was a little bit worried about that. I'm going to have to fill that spot in in just a minute with like some kind of log or something. But I'll worry about the rest of it later. Since we're right at the base of like a super tree, we get wood from chopping this guy on our left. And so I'm actually not that concerned about wood supply here. But I will help out with transporting stuff to where it needs to go just to save ourselves a little bit of money. And it looks like that rat over there is starting to build. Very nice. We've also got more migrants coming on in. So we've got robbed peddlers. This guy's a royalist. Okay, so if we're near them, they get happy. They are also clumsy. This guy's intelligent and a pacifist. We've got quick and a royalist. We've also got quiet and conservative happiness when policies are changed. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'll take two more rats. I just, I think we need more rats, all right? It doesn't matter how we get the rats. We just need more rats. Now, with these little individual guys... It looks like they've got a bunch of different needs, so we're going to have to figure something out along those lines, too. Let's go ahead and we'll give mining orders over here to take care of that area. And then we will also give out mining orders over here, just to take us a little bit further over to the right. And then I'll expand this out. We'll kind of go downwards, and I think I'm going to claim this cave over here, too. Oh, he broke out a little footstool so that he could mine a little bit higher. I adore that detail. That's really, really nice that the developers have gone to the effort 
uh, of making like little things like that matter, dude. They do. When it comes to game design, little things like that matter. The fact that the little guy breaks out a footstool and puts it out to grab a tile that otherwise he would just sort of be like ghost mining up above and he steps on top of it so that the pickaxe actually connects with the tile that he wants to hit. That's such a nice little detail, dude. I love it. Now with this over here, we've got to assign a citizen, I think, to be in here. And so the affecting ability appears to be strength. So I'm going to put Jack on this. And Jack is going to start producing planks, methinks. And so, yeah, it looks like he's changed his outfit, too. He's in, like, a little worker's outfit now, and he's got, like, a little headband on. Okay, so they made different little outfits for your rats, too, when you give them various jobs. I also very much like to see that. Now that we've hollowed that out to that side, let's take a look at our base objects. So we've got a storage. We've got beds. And I assume that everybody wants a bed. It takes up a two by two. Let's get a toilet, I guess, because everybody poops. There we go. And we'll just drop two of those guys right there, right next to the city gate, so people know what we're all about, so that they'll understand these battles be moving out here. And looky there, he breaks out a little saw, and he's starting to process for our sawmill. Good. I don't know. I'd like to move the storage down here underground, too. Like, we live underground, so I would like all of our stuff to be underground. But I don't know if there's going to be, like, a, a movement setting, unfortunately. Yeah, I think we might have to build a new one and then, like, break this one down or something. I'm not really too sure. There's both of our bathrooms looking fantastic. The other order that I think we're going to need is for some more ladders to go down. Oh, it won't let me get around the tree. Bummer. All right, we'll build those two ladders, and I'll see if I can chop the tree from the ladder in order to get it out of the way, and then we'll descend down to the next level. We'll put in some floor blocks in order to make this place look a little bit nicer. The next thing that we need to build is we need to build a laboratory, and we need to build a research desk is the next thing that we need to build. Not enough research is in the storage. Oh, you have to have them in the storage. Interesting. I would probably remove that constraint. Just allow the player to put down blueprints wherever they... Oh, this little guy's sleeping right here. Uh-oh, is everybody getting tired? Oh, yeah, they are. They're going to get cranky with me if I don't get some beds down. All right. That's what I was clearing this space for over here was to make kind of like a little sleeping area, I guess. Like a sleeping nook. We'll start, like, placing those when and where we can. I actually don't know if we have the leaves available to actually get this done. New migrants. We've got playful and we've got royalist. We've got frugal and conservative. We've got hardy and conservative. We've also got pacifist. I'll probably go with the hardy conservative, I guess. The 30 HP seems to be really rad. And we don't even have policies yet so like i wouldn't stress about it too much i don't even know if we have the leaves in here to build those beds we may need further leaves what do we have going on with leaves right now 23 of them we're actually okay good it's now pinging me i was i was busy bedsmithing trying to get everybody in my society a bed but what it wants from me right now is it wants me to provide some kind of service that makes people happy so i think what we're gonna have to do is we're going to need to get the research desk down sooner rather than later. I also need to get this tree out of the way. There we go. Kill that guy off. Actually, if I could kill all these trees so I can get this ladder down to the next level and we can start building scaffoldings and whatnot uh, for our people to be comfy. Did my man just drop a deuce? Oh, it's only like a half door. Gotcha. So, I mean, at least he washed his hands afterwards. Good for you, man. I forget that step, like, at least 80% of the time, so the rats are doing a better job than I am. All right, let's go back up to the surface. I'm a little bit worried about food, too. So, like, if I gather this wheat over here, does it need to be processed at all? No, it just becomes food. All right, well, we may have to, like, troll the surface a little bit to see if we can gather up enough food for our little ratisans. But so far, I'm very happy with this demo. Like, there are... Inklings of detail precisely where there should be inklings of detail like there are things here that the developer did not need to put in But ultimately did in order to make the whole thing flow a little bit more smoothly and also visually look a little bit more satisfying And those details to me are always kind of the hinging factor 
in whether or not a game comes out good. Like a developer that has the eye for like the visual detail and adding things that make the game sort of more fun and more visually intriguing and more visually immersive tend to be the kinds of developers that put that extra layer of effort into things like bug fixing and polishing and that kind of stuff as well. And so, you know, while today I wasn't necessarily looking forward to playing, we have a lot of colony survival games right now. I've been having a tremendous amount of difficulty finding things that are not colony survival games lately, but I am happy that I finally gave this one a look because to me, it feels pretty good. Like, I like that there's that extra layer of like the player gets to get involved, so I'm actually one of the little workers too. Just like all these guys, like I can move stuff around uh, the same way that they move stuff around. You can put them on little processing jobs. Uh, we need, I think, more beds. And also, I have to manually assign people to beds over here. And so they don't just, like, sleep in the bed on their own, unprompted. I kind of wish that they did. So, like, the beds were sort of like hot racks that they just went to whenever they needed them. Our colony seems to grow pretty fast. Like, it feels to me like they're they're throwing new guys at us pretty frequently. And so keeping up with the bed demand, I think, is going to be... A little bit of a headache, but over here we can do some research and people are telling me that they want happiness. And so what can I do to increase their happiness? We have like a massage bed over here. We have a circus stand. Ah, we can get a code stone. Uh, that's when I was wondering is when was all the policy stuff going to happen? And so the code stone is how we do that. We can change laws and collect taxes and things of that nature. I think we are going to need a lot of these little buildings before we get anything else because the research does, it seems to be locked not only by resources that you have available, but it also seems to be locked by what buildings you have on the map thus far. And so I think the gathering camp is a good idea, but we don't have enough leaves for it right now after having constructed all of our ladders and whatnot. So I'll mine this guy right here pick up some leaves just to get those rocking. We'll take them back up to the surface. The platforming feels perfectly fine too, in case you were wondering. Feels good. It vaults when it needs to vault, so on and so forth. Let's get our gathering camp going. So there's our gathering camp. We'll put that right there on the surface because it just makes things simpler. I do think that we're still very slowly gathering things, so it may be time to add another migrant or two. Cooperationist, so one belongs to the group of the largest social class. Wash hater, a florer. They don't like to sleep on a bed and they're quiet. That's easy peasy because it means I don't have to build a new bed. I am happy with this decision. And with this guy right here, it looks like they go out and they gather grains, actually. And it looks like the stats that affect this are strength. So I think we're going to want the... Yeah, we'll have her do it. She's got two strength. Uh, go out and gather our food. I think you're going to do a great job. All right. And so over here with our research now, I think I should be able... So we've got bunk beds for two rats over here. Oh, you actually don't need the thing, so it says that you, it's just saying that you need the research previous, but I should be able to do this. So we'll get the water tank done, and then on top of that, outside of the water tank, I think it's probably a good idea. We've got circus stands and, like, massage beds. I'm going to guess that those make happiness go back up, but I don't know that they make happiness go back up. But I'm going to give it a try. Uh, with the research desk, how do I get somebody to come over and research? Oh, it looks like it just kind of researches on its own. So nobody needs to actively be working on that. I think somebody just leveled up, too. It looks like each of the individual rats kind of, like, levels up and whatnot. There's no, like, push pause so that I can, like, look at these guys right now. But I would recommend they add a pause and, like, a time scale up here, maybe, so that you can make things go faster or slower. Water tank's good. We definitely want water tank. And it looks like she is gathering grains and stuff. I think if we wanted to build... A dirt block doesn't really matter. I don't really care about doing the dirt block. I think the other thing that I'd like to have is let's get woodworking. Like actual wood blocks that we can have people stand on to make things look a little bit better. We could also build our stuff. Oh, you can only queue up three at a time. Okay, that's fine. That's still fairly generous, being able to set up three researches. Radisons need to rest. 
Well, I mean, they've got beds, so they are more than welcome to hop on in when and where they would like to do so. I mean, I've got beds assigned, I think, to everybody that requires a bed, so we should be good on that front. Yeah, so it looks like we've got a little circus stand here, and it makes people happy. we got to find, like, a good spot to place it. I don't really have, like, the most fantastic of locations to drop this bad boy. But I was planning on clearing out the surface a little bit more aggressively, too. Circus block won't fit over there, either. All right, we'll figure out a spot for it. So it somewhat appears to me that all of the jobs are done as of right now. We are researching wooden blocks, but let's go ahead and see what's going on with these massage beds because people do seem to be pretty cranky and I can't find a spot where I can fit a lot of the other things. So that is a service effect. Oh, it trades oil for cleanliness. So the circus stand is actually what we need to do then. We don't really have a choice. Okay, let me see if I can dig out an area then. Hey, and we've got like the first bare basics of actual constructed living space taken care of. Very nice. I'm going to help them out with the mining over here. We're a little bit low on leaves anyway, so mining's probably going to be helpful at this junction. And then we'll try to get like the entertainment buildings and stuff down here, I suppose. So as far as service goes, give me a not enough resource. Oh, we need more boards. I done spent it on my boards, putting down the flooring. All right, we're hitting a little bit of a stopgap then. We'll get there, though. Mm, we've got some new locations down here with a whole bunch of iron ore and what looks like a gravestone. So we may come under attack pretty soon. I need a service to make everybody happy. Circus stand, circus stand. There we go. Everybody's going to go to the circus. Now we just need to find some bread and we can keep the population entirely pacified for the foreseeable future. I also wanted to build like a dirt block over here. It doesn't really matter too much to me, but just get like something in right there so that that gap goes away. All right, how are we doing around here, folks? Everybody looking good? And up goes the circus stand. I could help out with all this stuff, but I feel like I'm kind of like royalty, you know what I mean? I, I serve better in like an administrative capacity, all right? It looks like somebody needs to be assigned here, and it looks like the main stat, what is the main stat that it uses here for this? So the main ability is dexterity, it looks like, and Amy has two dexterity, so we'll go ahead and apparently she's got to dress up in a clown outfit in order to get this done, but hopefully people will come by because this actually generates revenue. People have to pay for this, and so when they want to refill, we get 15 bucks, so that's good. Our, our cash is kind of dropping off precipitously. There we go. That's what I like to see. What's interesting is the game... So I get why they do it this way. Every individual person in your society has their own wealth. So it says minus 15 when they buy a service, and it says plus 15 like when they do a job for you. I would consider the merits of reversing that, though, because the game is played from the player's perspective, which means that if you see a plus or a minus, you assume that it's happening to your meter instead. That's a very tentative suggestion, just about the way the player perceives and interacts with the game, I guess. But either way, we now have money coming in, and in fact, this is the first time that we haven't been bleeding money left and right since we started, so that's really awesome. I think we've got... What other stuff do I actually have that I can research? Let me go take a look. I assume lots of people are going to be down here going to the little circus hut just because nobody's been able to satisfy that need for a long time. Why are you waiting? Do I have to tell you to gather this stuff or do you just go do it? I don't know. She's got her working bandana on and I keep seeing these things depleted so I assume she's going to go over there and do it. They make little fart noises when they're inside the... They make little fart noises when they're inside the outhouse. <laughs> yeah, she's picking it. It looks like they just kind of take time off here and there, I suppose. There's some more food. I'm going to go walk the surface and see if I can find any more food around here. So we're going to need a bridge over here to cross over that way. Sure. 
She looks proud of herself. I don't know what she just did, but she looks pretty happy about it. We can get a whole bunch more wood if we start mining left over here, too. I doubt the enemy is going to be able to attack from our left. As I understand it, you do need to defend your colony at one point or another in order to make the whole thing function. So lots of radisons need joy. Okay. We'll go ahead and mine that out first. And we've got like a little walkway down here. And we'll kind of mine out this little catwalk too. Oh good, multiple people can be entertained simultaneously. Fantastic. Oh, he did it twice. Apparently his happiness must have been all the way depleted. Three times for him that he's done it now. Good, I need the happiness to go back up. Like, we appear to be struggling a little bit when it comes to the happiness of our citizens. Yeah, joy and necessity seem to be low on everybody. Let's go over to the research table and we'll see what satisfies necessity. We do have a school over here. I don't know if that would satisfy necessity. I assume that necessity is mostly going to come from processing, though. So we have a woodworking thing. We've got a weaving mill. We should probably get that because the symbol is clothing on there. So that's probably what we want to start with. So we'll get those two done real fast. And then I'm going to go gather some of the things that we have rattling around. Our net happiness is trending upwards, so I'm not really too worried about it. It's gone up a bit, so I think it's going to be all right. I'm going to mine this out, too, just to get it out of the way. We can climb up right there. We've got sand on this side. What is that? Granite? Rock. Just rock in general. All right. I'm pretty interested in processing this iron over here, too, although it looks like the mining is going to be short going. We do have kind of craft the world-style enemies wandering around on the map, too, which is where I think we're going to get some of our principal antagonism from as we go through the game. We'll grab this iron ore over here and take it up for the research points. We need research pretty badly. So it looks like we need some sticks in order to get what we want here. Also got the laboratory, so this is probably, yeah, we're going to have to pay somebody to basically generate research points for us. Wow, that thing is big. Okay, we'll put it right there. I love the building designs, though. They've all got, like, little rat-themed things going on to them. Like, there's, like, benches and beds and things that have little rat ears. Like, you can tell these people are very, they're very patriotic about being rat folk, all right? What does this do right here? It's just a flower. Do we have any of those inside of our inventory? I don't even know if I've picked any flowers. That might just be free research. Yep, free research. You gotta try to research everything. How do I change the output on the lumber mill over here? Let's go look. So with the lumber mill output... Ah, there you go. Uh, produce for me some sticks then. We're gonna need quite a few more sticks, I think, before this gets better. And then I'm just gonna give like a hard and fast mining order to start working our way into that tree right there. And maybe we'll come out the other end at some point and be able to figure out what we want to do. We're also going to need, I think, water at some junction. I don't know. There's a water barrel, and it says it captures water, so I think I researched it too, actually. Yeah, there it is right there. I suppose I could put it up on the surface. It, it's raining right now. I figure a water barrel is probably the most helpful it could possibly be. If it's being rained onto or into, that's probably a good place to start. So there's your, your rain barrel, and we'll figure out what that affects. I'm guessing it supplies water, and certain buildings require water in order to work. So this doesn't need water. We have a great deal of research left, too, so maybe I'll take a look at what we can research now. And we've got bunk beds that would make us more effective in letting people sleep. We've got railroads you can play around with, lift stations, there's a hunter's hut. We've got a fishery, but we would have to find fish there. A grain farm, that might not be a bad idea. Yeah, let's go with a grain farm for now so that people have something to eat. And then from there, a pub, eh? Pub requires beer, though. Yeah, let's get the brewery. 
All right, so we've got brewery coming on out, and we've got other things happening. What do we have on our details over here? Wanderers, so she is foolish and pessimistic, progressive and frugal. I'm gonna take her, the frugal alone, that she requires 30% less of every need is just enormous. Like, that takes a big strain off of us, so I'll have that. Uh, we're also gonna need another bed up here, though, because I haven't taken any citizens in a little bit, so we gotta expand the, the sleeping supply. I love that they have little things like when they get up, they stretch and yawn, too. Like, they could just get up and get down, you know, when they're finished with their jobs. Like, this whole thing could decide to be utilitarian, but it doesn't decide to be utilitarian. It decides to be up and over the top, and every single activity has little associated actions like wiping the sweat off their brow, or stretching, or like yawning, or like sticking their hand behind their back because their back hurts after a hard day of work. Like, the game is full of these little details, and these are the kinds of details that I hope to see from games whenever I cover them, and so this is really good. Uh, we need a strength guy for this. Luckily, we have a strength guy. Strength lady, actually. So she'll come over here and I guess gather up the water, and it looks like this just produces water. That's it. Oh, and look, she's got like a... what? What is that outfit right there that she's wearing? Is that like a little raincoat? Is that... It's like a raincoat, and it's got like a little like pond flower hat. <laughs> I actually don't know what that is on her head. But she's got a little raincoat on, so that's kind of cute. We have our sticks now, which makes me think that the weaving mill is about ready to be a go. So we'll plop that down right there. And I think that's probably the last thing we'll place. So far, I am very pleased with this demo. I'm very happy with it. This is a good demo. This is the level of requisite quality I would expect and hope for from every demo. This is a demo that knows where it's going. It knows what it wants to be. It does not diverge from that, but it makes up for being basically just like craft the world with rats by putting little details into every single corner of the game and really making it. And I think there's room for that. Like nobody's really tried to, nobody's really tried to capture craft. The world is getting very long in the tooth. Nobody's tried to do any market capture in that area. And I think it's actually very, very smart. And people always seem to sign up for anything that has to do with little rat citizens and whatnot. There's been a big upwelling in games that have, like, rats as the main characters, whether they be doing, you know, grim, dark medieval stuff or colony building. I think it's an aesthetic that works, and people jump out of their seats for it. And this is all great. I, I like all of it. I like the idea that we need to drive revenues by selling items and services in order to pay for all the little blocks and things that are being mined that adds almost a sort of like financial scarcity to the game that requires that you centrally plan your economy in like a smart way uh, there there's a number of things here that i think are very intriguing and heading in a good and proper direction uh, we are now manufacturing cloth and now that we are manufacturing cloth uh, the final thing would be to get ourselves a i think a a sewing station or something like that because I don't think they actually manufacture clothing here. No, they don't. Uh, they just make the fabric there. So the next thing we're going to need if we wanted that to work out is we needed the tailor's shop, but that's going to cost us three research. So did they ever get... Oh, they did get the research lab done down here, so we should probably start generating our own research as well. That way we don't have to rely on new discoveries in order to get our points. Do we have anybody with some brain prow? It looks like it sorts by the person that's best suited to a job. Love it. Last thing, I want to see what the little researcher looks like. What does the little researcher look like? Oh, she's got like little round frame glasses on. She's got like a little wizard Harry Potter cape. Fair. Uh, this is Ratopia. I'm very, very happy with this demo. This may be one of the better put together demos I've ever played in the last couple years. It's rare that demos show this much promise, and I think this game's gonna sell a ton of copies. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today, up on the chopping block, we were messing around with Ratopia. Tomorrow, it will be something else. Thank you for sharing your time with me, and it's time to go.